You are listening to a MIDI file being played in FluidSynth using General User GS version 2. In this video, I will show you how to set up FluidSynth in macOS to play MIDI files just by double clicking them. If you're using Windows or Linux, I have created a version of this tutorial for you. Links are in the video description. FluidSynth currently provides the best MIDI playback you can get on macOS, at least that I'm aware of. I tried a number of Salfont based MIDI players from the Apple Store, but none of them came anywhere close to sounding correct with General User GS. Here are a few short comparisons. You'll see what I mean. Now, this isn't just me picking on one MIDI player. Most Mac and iOS MIDI players use the Apple DLS music device that's built into macOS and iOS. The problem is, this synth is a very poor implementation of the sound font standard, so the more detailed the programming used in a sound font, the worse it generally sounds with the Apple DLS synth. I should also briefly mention Drumstick MIDI Player. This player features Fluid Synth for MIDI playback, but currently has issues with tempo and accuracy of MIDI timing. However, as I am recording this video, this is being actively worked on, so definitely keep an eye on that project. Alright, enough ado, on to the tutorial. First of all, you will need a general MIDI sound font to be able to render the instrument sounds in your MIDI files. For this tutorial, we'll be using my new General User GS release version 2.0. To download, open a browser. and go to www.schristiancollins.com slash general user. Scroll down to download right here. And under current version, click the link to download general user GS. Note that this will be version 2.0.0 or higher by the time you're watching this video. In Finder, go into your downloads and extract the zip file you downloaded by double-clicking it. Now you can delete the zip file. I recommend moving the General User GS folder to a more permanent location. I like to store my virtual instruments in my music folder, so that's what I will do here for this tutorial, but you can put it wherever you prefer. I'm going to click Go uh, Home right here, and then Here's my music folder. I'm going to add this to favorites so I have quick access to it. Go inside the first music folder, but not the second. The, there's a music folder inside the music folder. Ignore that one. We're going to right click in here, go new folder. I'm calling it samples. And then, oh, I need to move that. Meant to do a new finder window there. Downloads, move the general user folder into the samples folder. And then let's open the folder. I'll show you what's inside. So we have the sound font right here. And then we also have demo midis, documentation, and support. So within demo midis, here's a small collection of some of my favorite MIDI files. I also have an audio folder in here that has audio rendering of all of these MIDI files so you can know what they should sound like when played using General User GS. Note you will need an audio player that can handle OGG audio files. Most media players should be able to, but macOS can't play them out of the box. Then we have a documentation folder. Go into that, and we have some documentation in here. This file list will change probably upon final release of General User GS 2.0. 
find readme.html and double click on it. It should open in Safari or whatever your default browser is. Go down to the playing MIDI file section in the table of contents here. Find fluid synth, which might be a different number by the time you're watching this video and click on it. And under step one, we have download and install fluid synth for your platform for Mac OS. You can install it using either homebrew or Mac ports. Either should be fine, but for this tutorial, we'll be using homebrew. Now I've yet to set up homebrew on this Mac. So let's open that and get it set up so you can see how that goes. So there are two ways you can install homebrew. One is using this terminal command and one is using a package installer. I have not tried the package installer, um, but I'm sure it should work just fine. We're going to use the terminal method. To do so, click this little clipboard icon, which will copy this command into the clipboard. And now open your terminal. This can be found in applications, utilities, and there it is. And then edit, paste, to paste the command you copied earlier and hit enter. It'll ask for your password. Whoops. All right. And if you don't already have Xcode installed, it will prompt you to install that. So I'll hit enter. And now this process might take a while. So I will be doing some fast forwarding here. It might ask for your password again. All right, and installation is now almost complete. You can see there is a next steps bit here where it says run these two commands in your terminal to add homebrew to your path. Uh, there's two commands here. It kind of wraps around a bit, so I'm going to expand the terminal window a bit, and now you can see Clearly, here's command number one. So I'm gonna highlight that, right click, copy. And then again, right click, paste, hit enter. And then let's do the same with that second command. And now we can use homebrew to install FluidSynth. To do so, type brew install FluidSynth, hit enter. And now it's downloading some of the other packages that are required for fluid synth. All right, so fluid synth is now installed. The next thing we need to do is create a configuration file so FluidSynth can find general user GS, and we also want to customize the reverb and chorus effects so they sound much nicer. So go back to the documentation in your web browser. Scroll down a bit until you get to step three, where you will see this configuration text. Copy it. And now you'll need to open text edit. Go into your main applications, and there it is. And then you'll also need to set the format to plain text by going up to Format and selecting Make Plain Text. Now paste in the text that you copied. Before you save this, we will need to customize this path to wherever you placed your general user GS sound font. I've located the general user GS sound font. Now to get the file path for this, go up to the view menu and select show path bar. Now select general user GS and right click on the name of the file here and copy general user GS as path name. 
Now in the text editor, just replace everything in these quotes by pasting what you copied. And that should be good. The other settings in here, um, this one sets Fluid Synth to emulate a Roland GS device, which I find has the best compatibility with the MIDI files I've been playing. This setting um, doubles the note polyphony, which is how many voices can play at the same time, from the default of 256. So if you're running into performance issues, you can reduce that number. These here are probably the most significant improvements to the sound quality since the default reverb and chorus settings in Flute Synth aren't very good. And lastly, this Interp 7 sets the highest quality sample interpolation. Again, if you run into performance issues, you can just remove that line. Now it's time to save the file. Go up to File, Save, untick the box that says if no extension is provided, use .txt. And then for where, select your user name folder and name the file dot, so you're gonna put a period at the beginning of the file name, fluid synth. Click save. The system will warn you that using a dot at the beginning of a file name will make the file hidden. This is fine. Click use dot. And you can close the text editor. Now let's test Fluid Synth to make sure everything is working properly. Go back to your terminal window, type Fluid Synth, followed by a space in the file browser, navigate to a MIDI file. We'll use the demo MIDI files that come with general user GS and drag and drop a MIDI file into the terminal window. You can now see the path to the MIDI file on the terminal command and hit enter. And if you hear music, then everything's been set up correctly. Congratulations. You can stop playback either by typing quit or just closing the terminal window also works. Now the next step is to set this up so you can just double click the MIDI file and have it start playing in Fluid Synth automatically. To do so, navigate to the General User GS support folder Fluid Synth, Mac OS, and copy the Fluid Synth application contained there into your applications. Now go back to your MIDI files and make sure this works by right clicking on a MIDI file, selecting Open With, Other, Find Fluid Synth in the list of applications and click Open. The first time you do this, you will need to provide permission for Fluid Synth to access the terminal. Click OK. And it's working. Now let's make it so all MIDI files will open in Fluid Synth when you double click on them. To do so, right click on a MIDI file and choose Get Info. Expand the Open With section. Click the drop down for application and choose Other. Find Fluid Synth and click Add. Then finally, click Change All. This will ask if you want all MIDI files to open with Fluid Synth. Click Continue, then close the info window. Let's test this by playing jcycle.mid. Note that some MIDI files might take a few seconds to start playing. And it's working. Awesome. So that's it. I know that was a lot of steps to get there, but it's really simple to use once you've got it set up. Since I'm not as familiar with Mac OS as I am with Windows and Linux, it's quite possible I've missed some really nice MIDI playback options. So please let me know in the comments if there's an app you think I should check out. 
I will be updating the general user GS documentation as my recommendations change. So keep an eye on my website and my YouTube channel as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.